We're here at the Auto House today. Thank you guys for joining us for another video here at CM Auto House. I know my most requested video from you guys has been a teardown and a rebuild of a T50 transmission. So we're going to do it today. <clears throat> I have three examples that I tore down last night. So we're going to do a full teardown inspection. So I'll show you what I look for when I do a rebuild and then we're also going to do an assembly of a T50. Alright we have our T50 and our tools on the bench. I'll show you what tools I use to tear down a T50. So I have a metal hammer, a soft dead blow hammer, two screwdrivers, two identical screwdrivers out of the same length. I have a little pocket screwdriver and then I have two different snap ring pliers. So I like these snap ring pliers because they have um, like grooves to grip the snap rings. And then the other style for like a C-clip style snap ring, there's grooves in here to lock in um, the snap ring tangs at the end of these. So. <clears throat> so from my other videos, we've gotten up to this point. I know you guys have been dying for me to like tear these things down. So when I'm at this point, I'll show you what I look for. So first of all, I'll make sure uh, everything turns freely. Which it doesn't, right? It sounds like something's binding up in this thing. Um, we had a... Uh, you uh, look for obvious broken stuff. This guy had a broken shift fork for fifth and reverse. One really critical thing that I learned a long time ago was um, the counter shaft. The counter shaft is supposed to have zero end play, so ideally zero end play. So I will put my fingers at the end, the OD of the front counter shaft bearing, and press back and forth on the counter shaft. So. So it feels like the bearings are okay at least. If you get this kind of slop, there could be an issue. So to give you an example, I had one transmission. There was so much play in the counter shaft that the gears on the counter shaft were actually rubbing against the dog teeth of the input shaft. So these two teeth were contacting, um, causing a whine noise in every gear except for fourth. So, that's my initial inspection, so we'll take these shafts out and then start teardown. Alright, so let's check out the input shaft. If you watched our T50 removal video, this part of the input shaft is really important. Um, you can see this guy's got wear on it, but um, because you can't run your fingernail through it, it's okay. This is still, um, this is still good. Um, this is where the seal goes for the on the transmission, the input shaft seal. Again, there's um, this guy looks good also. Um, let's see. So we'll take the input shaft off from the the output right now. There's a synchro, and then there's going to be 12 needle rollers inside this guy that are going to fall out. So we will do that right now. Alright, so that's the input shaft, synchro comes out. Yeah, this transmission is really tough on the input bearing. Um, so just assume you're going to replace this guy. But, but to show you like some wear areas, if you look at the cylindrical rollers in here, you can see there's a lip where they're on the outer ring. The deeper that lip, the more worn this bearing is. But um, again, assume you're just going to replace the input bearing. So we'll take off the speedometer drive gear now. Alright. Cool. Um, 
there's two C clips that hold this guy on. This is a headache to take off, so I'll show you guys why. So that's ex so I'll use um, this pliers for it. Yeah, it's a headache. Alright, there's one. I got two of those. So this guy, <clears throat> and then the sp speedo gear just slides off. There's marks on the speedo gear, so you can see that 21. I gotta double check. I know the the other, the plastic gear, 19 is GTS, but um, we'll uh, put in the notes um, which of these metal drive gears are for GTS. So we'll get this other one off. Yeah, I used to use just like a regular set of uh, snap ring pliers and it was a nightmare. So if you're going to be doing this often, I would get the right pliers for it. see so, all right so next step output rear bearing so next step output rear bearing you know this is a GTS rear bearing because it's shielded on the back um, if this is an older t50 it's unshielded so you want the GTS one all right so <clears throat> so this is where my two equal length screwdrivers come in um, Harbor Freight has these for free sometimes, the screwdriver set. Right. So this, we're going to have to take this C-clip off to press this off. So let's do that. And then the rubber mallet, it's like flat on that side, so that's what it's good for. We're gonna put this stuff in order. Um, that's key with building manual transmissions is that everything has to be in order. So we'll organize this in a second. But yeah, we'll, uh, when we come back, we'll set this up in the press and we'll press off the rear output bearing. All right, we got our press set up to take off the rear output bearing. This is a 20 ton press from Harbor Freight. Um, one key you want to make sure depending on your, the size of your press the legs the width of the legs The width on your legs might not be big enough to Have the whole transmission assembly slide through so you might have to set up the press differently I've uh, and then Bearing splitter set up like this uh, try to get this as close to the whatever you're pressing as possible don't be like me so yeah we'll press this off right now all right <clears throat> so when we start pressing always have a grip on this guy because this is going to fall down you don't want this thing crashing on the floor and damaging something or damaging yourself and then safety first Again, organization is key for building transmissions. 
you got to find a way that you like to organize. So I'll tell you how I like to do it. So I will stack up in order the way I take off. And for me, face up always means the rear of the transmission. So um, again, this being face up, you know the shielded side is towards the back of the transmission. So I'll do that throughout the whole thing and I'll always go this way. So repeatability is important, right? Always facing the same way, always going the same direction and then everything will stay organized. All right, so we can start pulling some of this off. So there's a spacer between the, the rear output bearing and fifth gear. There's a check ball in there. Get your magnet, pull the check ball out. And the check ball sits in right there. So again, organization. I'll put the check balls inside of whatever I'm doing. So fifth gear and the synchro, there should be a split bearing in here. Fifth and sync, fifth gear, synchro. Split bearing. I'll put the split bearings back in there. And then between the hub, there's a washer. Let's see. I'll turn this around so you guys can see. There's another of those same C-clips here. So to help me get a better grip to uh, take that guy off, I'll shift this thing into reverse. All right. Cool. We'll take this guy, take that C-clip off. All right. Cool. So, to, I'm gonna shift this back into the neutral position. There's three keys, so there's one, two, and then three keys. I'll put my fingers on the three keys and then shift this guy back into the neutral position. If you just try to move this guy, the keys and the, and the one spring right here is gonna fly out, so. So yeah, this guy's back in neutral. We'll put these back on the bench and then when we come back, we'll press off um, get behind reverse and we'll press all these guys off as an assembly. All right, we got this set up to press off reverse and then the fifth reverse hub. If you notice, I got the flat side of this bearing splitter up because if you had the rounded side, there's a, da a risk of um, damaging the gear. So you always want the flat side up if possible. All right, so we'll press this guy off. Remember, hold on. You don't want this guy falling down. Oh, there we go. I just took these guys off so it's uh, easier to get this thing out from under the press. All right, when we come back, we'll go back on the table. All right, so here we are on the table again. Uh, reverse gear. This is the fifth and reverse side. You can usually tell which side is reverse because um, the, the teeth on the reverse side get chewed up. Forgot to mention one more thing. So, so keeping things organized, these sleeves have a particular direction and here's how I remember it. The front two have the rounded edge and then the reversed fifth, the back one, has the rounded edge on the back side. So I always remember rounded, rounded, and then rounded the other way. So these need to go in this direction. All right. So let's see. So again, I like to put the rear side facing up. And then um, when I disassemble these, sometimes like things get everywhere. So what I do to make sure like, okay, this is the back side, I'll actually use a center punch and I'll make a couple marks, right? So when I uh, center punch this guy, when I clean it up, the center punch, 
punch marks are still there so I can still remember, okay, this is the back side. I've seen other people use like paint markers and stuff, but you need to actually get this stuff like surgically clean so that paint and stuff's gonna wash off. So that's why I use the center punch. It's not gonna damage anything. So this is for reverse gear. Pull this off. There's two cage needles and then a, uh, I don't know, a holder for those guys. And we have another check ball. Check ball sits in that slot for this. Put those together. And then for the output center bearing, you have another of those same C clips. Output center gearing, bearing, again, you know this is a GTS unit because it's shielded on both sides. When we take this bearing off, I'll show you. But if you buy a rebuild kit or buy a bearing and you can see the balls is unshielded, that's not the correct one. Always get the double shielded um, output center bearing. So we'll knock off that C clip. Sorry, I always I know it, the view is better the other way, but I always work this way. So, so I'm gonna get confused if I turn the transmission around. All right. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna put these on the table. When we come back. We're going to put the bearing splitter and take off the output center bearing by itself. All right, got this on the press again. I have the rounded side um, on the bearing for this one, just because if I flip it over, um, it's not going to fit in between the bearing and the gear. But this is okay because uh, it won't. Um, the rounded side won't damage the bearing. So yeah, we'll press this off right now. One more thing, if you notice these bearings press off too easy, that probably means this shaft is worn and that's a big problem. So take note, if this bearing, if it's just like one press and the whole shaft falls down, the shaft surface is probably worn. All right, when we come back, We'll take a look at this on the table. All right, if you noticed at the end when I was finishing pressing that guy, I, I hit um, the shaft down a little bit. So that's the press surface. It's, this thing's still gotta get past this and this. Um, this is a pretty relatively tight clearance fit, but um, you should be able to slide this guy on. So that's why I tapped it a couple times to get this guy all the way off. Again, you know this is the GTS one because it's double shielded. It's got like this uh, rubber or plastic seal on both sides. Always get this bearing. All right, so we'll put this guy down. First gear, bearings, synchro will come off. Maybe they'll come off. <laughs> So we'll take a look. Oh, shit. So needle bearings. There's that race. Make note, um, there's a check ball there too. First gear synchro. First gear. And then check ball. So put these guys together. goes this way all right so we're getting close um, the next step when we come back I'm gonna put the bearing splitter behind second gear and then this whole assembly will press off
All right, second gear and then the first second hub. Again, I got this thing on the flat side, so we're gonna press this guy off. and then we'll go back to the bench. All right, so the needle roller for second gear has no race, it rides directly on the shaft, so we'll take this guy off. All right, so second gear, second gear synchro. And again, um, Three, four, one, two, they're both rounded on the front side. So we know this is the back side. I'm gonna grab my center punch. We're gonna center punch mark this guy again. So that we know this is the back side. Um, the last part is third gear in this assembly. This is part of the shaft. Do not press against this. When you put your bearing splitter on here, you need to press against third gear itself. So when we come back, we need to take that snap ring off and then we'll press third gear and then the 3-4 hub off together. All right, so this snap ring is really tough to get off too. So this is where these pliers come in handy. So I'll shift this guy into third. Don't worry, this won't slide all the way off. So I'll shift it into third just to give me some room. And then it's kind of check and guess which oh. which uh, which plier is gonna work out better. So we'll try out these guys first. Or maybe not. Maybe we'll try the black ones this time. Okay, that went a lot easier than it probably will for you, but sometimes these get jammed in there and rusted. If you have some rust penetrant, I'd let it soak in there. Otherwise, you're going to fight these guys. But that went a lot easier than it usually does. All right. So when we come back, I'm going to set up the bearing splitter and we'll press off this assembly. I got to reset the press too. All right, we're gonna press off third gear and then the three, four hub now that we have our snap ring off. Um, my plates have like different cutouts, so I can just use the cutouts to uh, press off the gear. So like there's a big circle cutout, there's a little triangle, there's a big triangle. I'm gonna use the little circles on this and it secures the gear well enough. If you just have square press plates, just grab the bearing splitter again. But yeah, we'll press this off right now. All right. So when we come back, we'll take a look at everything on the bench. All right, third gear has no bearing. It rides directly on the shaft itself. So third gear, third gear synchro, and then also the 3-4 hub. Again, the front two hubs rounded is forward. So we're going to, like all the other ones, center punch this guy. Put one more. All right. So here's our output shaft. We'll do like a quick once over on the here. The stuff pressed on was fairly tight, so we know the shaft, like the seal surfaces, are in pretty good shape. Um, one key thing to note, this is where those 12 needles ride on. If you see that this thing is like really discolored, if it's like black or, or like smoky colored, or if, there's, if you can feel a ridge in here, this portion is worn. This whole thing needs to be replaced. So yeah, when we come back, we'll look at the individual components and I'll show you what I look for to determine if 
um, the parts to rebuild this trans are worth reusing or need to be replaced. All right, I forgot to mention at the start of this video, guys, don't just rely on this video to uh, tear down and rebuild your T50. Make sure to get the instructions. I just got these from, you know, whatever PDF of the A86 factory service manual. So this is the full T50 instructions. So I'm not going to tear down the counter shaft. I'll just go over it with you guys. The front counter shaft bearing also has probably the hardest job um, second to the input shaft bearing which would go here. So you, this guy will usually have a lot of wear also. So just assume you're going to replace this guy. The counter shaft center bearing has this this like integrated ball. This does not come out. And there's a notch in the case where this guy will sit. Reverse idler. Um, this is not pressed on. It just slips on. This can actually go both ways. So don't worry about that. Fifth gear. And then counter shaft rear bearing is held on with this snap ring. And then this presses off. So this will press off. This will press off, this slides off, and then this also slides off. The 14 millimeter, um, and then you have to press this off. There's a torque spec for this guy. Um, so lock tight and then torque to spec. So our T50 is all apart. What am I going to look for to decide what am I going to replace or what can be reused in the transmission? So. Our 1-2 hub and slider assembly, I'll take this apart. There's three keys, one spring on each side of this guy, so that's what the little pocket screwdriver is for. That'll come out, lift this up, and then the keys. If you're going to reuse these keys, it's a good idea to make sure that they face all the same way. So like we talked about, all my stuff, I like to do the side facing up faces the back of the trans. So I'm gonna do that with the keys also. So these keys will be up facing towards me. There's one more spring on the other side. Take the spring out. So the hub, um, do these teeth look clean? Are there burrs or anything on the hub on these teeth? Are teeth missing or chipped off? If I run my finger across here, I can feel some burrs. So usually I'll take a flat file and I'll just do this over just to clean off the burrs. That's These hubs typically don't have problems. The fifth and reverse hub gets pretty beat up. That's the only one but the other two hubs typically don't have problems. Uh, <coughs> these keys though, I'll show you as I wipe down this key. If you can see the wear marks on that key where it looks like the letter I, if that letter I gets too deep, the shift sleeve will be have a hard time securing in gear so that's why so worn keys could cause gear pop out if that if that um, worn portion is worn too much so you would have to replace the keys all right so two springs these guys wear out also if we look there's a shiny portion where you can see it's resting against the key. So if these wear too much, you can visibly see if it's worn too much. And then on this back area too, where it's shiny. This is good. I would still reuse this spring. But I've seen these worn like way flat before. And um, the spring at that point can no longer hold adequate tension and I would get new springs. All right. <clears throat> to really inspect this you need to clean it uh, because all this gear oil and all the garbage that's in there is holding these needles relatively stiff so how do you tell these are bad I'll clean this off and 
if you can shake this thing and it like really shake sounds like the needles are loose or like you can visibly see the needles and if they're like way leaned over that means this bearing's worn and it should be replaced So, there's a common misconception if you have shifting problems in a T50. You grind gear, you get blocked out of gear. People will tell you, oh, your synchros are bad. Well, that's not the case. If we look at the synchro, this is second gear. So this guy, second gear is probably the drive gear that gets beat up the most on a T50. If we look at the teeth of the synchro, these teeth look good, they're still sharp. Um, another measurement that you need to check in the service manual, if we put the synchro on the gear cone, there's actually a, a synchro height that you need to get a feeler gauge and find the spec. So that's the height between the synchro and the gear. If this height is too low, the synchro can't slow down the gear anymore and you're gonna be grinding gears. So synchro height, another thing to look out for. All right, so shifting problems in the T50, what actually goes wrong? It's not these. <clears throat> when you have shifting problems in a T50, I wanna say 99% of the time it's these shift sleeves. T50s have this like interesting design flaw where it's like, you can shift the transmission faster than the synchro can keep up to synchronize the shift. So what ends up happening is the engagement teeth on the gear and then especially the engagement teeth on the shift lead of themselves round out and wear out. And that's where you get the blocked out of gear or like, <coughs> like grinding gears. If we look at second, um, this thing's okay, right? I mean, 40-year-old stuff, it's okay. I think I would still reuse this. And um, I'm looking at how sharp these engagement teeth are. Are they equally sharp on both sides, or are they like w biased, worn one way or the other? Are all the teeth still there and not chipped off? Um, another thing, every single gear, including the counter shaft, you need to clean these off and then roll through each gear and make sure there's no pitting, damage, chipping. Really pro tip, especially on the counter shaft fourth gear, which is also the input shaft. These two guys, especially. If you see on the gear surface, if someone drew like a line in between the gears and like one part's shiny and one part's not, that means the gear is worn, that trans is gonna whine and that gear needs to be replaced. So, so the teeth on second look okay, right? But if we look at the second gear side of the shift sleeve, it tells us a different story. This is not the worst example, but you can see how the teeth have been worn down. There's almost no tooth on that one anymore. So when you have shifting problems in the T50, it's actually these hard parts, the shift sleeves, not the synchronizers that wear out. 